Good afternoon. Welcome to EduSat Network. Friend, we have organized two lectures on computer science, very important topic, wireless network. We will try to understand the basic characteristic, the basic nature and how the wireless network unfolding uh, in, the, in the sector of computer and how it is revolutionizing the communication pattern. So, we will try to understand in today's lecture and for discussion on this very topic, we have in the studio uh, Dr. D. K. Lovial, he is Associate Professor of Computer Science in one of the premier institution of the country, Jawaharlal Nehru University and uh, he has a number of uh, articles published in his credit. So, I think his knowledge and experience will help us to understand this topic. So, on your behalf, I welcome him for a lecture. Welcome, him, sir. Uh, thank you, Abhinji. Uh, today's lecture is on wireless sensor network and uh, let me uh, go topic by topic and First, I will uh, give little brief introduction of what is wireless sensor network and before that I will talk what wireless network is. And then next topic I will cover is uh, what exactly the sensor network is and then I will be covering what are the specific characteristics of wireless sensor network. And after that I will move to uh, certain research issues which may not be very useful for undergraduate students, but those students in future, those who are interested to pursue their higher education and interested in doing their PhD and research, probably it may give them some insight to look into future. That is what I will cover. And then certain applications definitely because wireless sensor network is an application oriented uh, area. So, therefore, the applications are very, very important. So, I will discuss what are some applications which are useful and then yes, what are the requirements to establish a wireless sensor network. That will be the next topic I will cover and then I will go on the impact of the factors that really uh, to be considered for design of a wireless sensor network. So, uh, let me uh, give you a brief introduction of what wireless sensor network is. Before that, I will talk the various kinds of wireless networks available and to be used. Now, generally what we use is we use wired network and very limitedly we use wireless networks. And now, we have uh, wireless local area networks. So, therefore, I have de uh, defined the various categories of wireless networks. So, we have a fixed wireless network where we could have microwave as a backbone where you may be communicating like your uh, wireless uh, department communicates and then you have a satellite based uh, backbone network. That means, you communicate from here to a particular space and then it communicates satellite or you could have state way communicating with your mobile phones to the satellite. That is what we call fixed network because the wire the, the microwave links are fixed that means, there are stations which are connected through microwaves and they are fixed at a place which do not change their positions. Therefore, we call them fixed area network. And second is geo satellite backboard network that means, we have satellites launch and geosynchronous orbit that is 36,000 kilometers from the earth center of the earth. And if a satellite is launched at that orbit, that means its movement, its, its motion is relatively at the same speed as the earth rotates. Therefore, the satellite will be covering at the same position all the time, but one satellite is not sufficient to, come to cover the entire globe. So, we need multiple minimum three or four satellites to cover the entire globe, but the communication which we generally do making calls to our friends and colleagues, if you do it through satellite communication, the distance between a satellite at geosynchronous and the earth is, is too much that is 36,000 kilometers and it takes one way a signal to go from earth to the satellite, it takes 270 milliseconds. In communication, 270 millisecond time is a good time. So, therefore, if you send a signal to a satellite at geosynchronous orbit and getting a response will take 540 milliseconds and that is too huge a time as far as wireless networks are concerned. So, therefore, we should have a lower orbit satellites, satellites launched at 900 kilometers, but that will take less time to send a signal as well as to get a response, but the speed and the, the velocity relative velocity of these satellites will be very high relative to the earth. That means, they may be not focusing all the time at the same position. They will be changing their position covering different areas of earth at different times. So, that makes it more difficult. That means, 
to cover a point on the earth, you need that a satellite covering, if it moves out, then other satellites should come in and cover that position. That means, you need a large number of satellites to be covering. So, therefore, but they are wireless network because the, the channel we are using is wireless. That means, there is no wide medium, all communication is taking place through wireless medium. So, the other category of the network is access network. What does access network means? The access network means, the network said that the access network means, you try to access the services of a network through wireless and beyond that, it may be a wide connection. For example, I have put it in two categories, that is a cellular network. The cell phones which you are using falls under the category of access network. The meaning hereby is, your mobile phone, when you try to communicate or communicating with your friends, so your mobile phone is first transmitting its data or a signal to a base station fixed at a nearby place and that is through wireless. But then this base station will further transmit the signal to other base station. So, and so finally, through the multiple base stations, the signal will reach to the final mobile station. Now, these base stations are fixed and generally connected through wired medium maybe fiber optic cable. So, they are fixed. Base stations are fixed. Their connectivity mostly is through wired medium, either high end cables or fiber optical cables. So, therefore, that is fixed network. That means, the interconnection of base stations is fixed and the area covered by a base station is called a cell and therefore, any mobile handset falling within that radius of a base station will only communicate with that base station. That is why we call it a cellular network or a cellular phone. The other category of network, therefore, the access network which we are accessing the services of a mobile uh, uh, service is only through wireless from your mobile station or your handset to the base station. That is why it is called access network. A remaining network which is interconnection of base station is providing you the services. So, other category now, this is what the one of the network is cellular network. The other network is random access network and random access networks are mostly used in local area network. If you go on wired network, mostly probably you may be knowing it and when you use your wired LAN, and we follow random access network because one, we do not want to have many connections and then the channels will be shared in a random access network and mostly it is falling in two categories. One is broadband access network. That means the if you are taking a connection at home generally to uh, communicate for your internet and you have a wireless modem at home and through your wireless modem, you are communicating with some of the service provider like it may be MTN in Delhi or BSNL in some other places, it may be Airtel and Vodafone so on and so forth. So, your connection from your home modem to the service provider is through wireless. That is what you are accessing the services provided by that access provider through a wireless medium and from through your modem that is what this network is called access network. A remaining network probably may be fixed edge and that is and now the broadband access network, that means the services we are accessing today, it may be WiMAX, which generally is not yet being provided in India, but uh, you have a, you call a broadband connection, uh, probably 256 or 512 kilo uh, bytes of data transmission, but at the same time, there is no fixed definition of what is broadband. Initially, when broadband came, it is, it was considered that any speed more than 2 Mbps will be considered a broadband. But however, this is not a fixed definition, it keeps on changing. Even today, if you are taking a connection either from MTNL or from some other network, you will find that we call a broadband access or a broadband network or broadband service even 512 kilobytes of data rate or even 256 bytes of data rate. The other category of random access networks are ad hoc networks and that is a very uh, uh, upcoming area which a lot of research is going on. And that is where we fall in, uh, there are three groups, three categories of this network. One is a wireless internet, other is a sensor network and the other is the wireless. Now, what is wireless ad hoc network? If you look at this, what we have been saying is, in a cellular network, you have a wireless connectivity from your mobile station. Mobile station means I am referring to a handset, mobile phone. Two, the base station is through wired medium and remaining base stations are connected through wired medium and these base stations are fixed, that is what I said. Assume a case that 
if you do not have that base stations fixed at various places, then you will not be able to communicate. That is what if you go or move to an area where you do not find a base station established or installed by a service provider, you will get a message. Either your message is you are out of the coverage area. That means the, the service provider do not have coverage in that local area because he has not established a base station, a tower there and therefore you do not get the service. That means what I am trying to focus here is to access the services of cellular network, what you need is you need the already existing set of base station installed. That is what we call an existing infrastructure. So, that means cellular networks are infrastructure based network and that means they are pre-established or pre-installed before using them and if they are not provided, you cannot have the service of that service provider. Whereas, when you move to ad hoc network, what you are referring is we do not have any existing infrastructure. That means, everybody goes moves with these laptops and if these laptops start communicating with each other without having any access point all around, then probably we call this an ad hoc network. Now, what does, why it is called ad hoc network? are two reasons. Number one is when you move with your devices like your laptops, it may be your personal digital assistant, PDA, it may be your cell phones in future, we never know and then you establish a network among themselves. Now, even if there is no basis and no access point, you start communicating. Now, one point is very clear here now. When you try to establish a prompt network of your existing devices, then what you are trying to do is if two devices are not in direct range, common wireless range of each other, then how do they communicate? That means, if my wireless signal of my laptop is received by the other laptop in the same area, then it will start communicating. But the laptop which I want to communicate may not be receiving the signal because it may be at far distance. But however, if some other laptop or some other devices helps that it receives my signal, and forwards it to the next one because it falls within the range of both the devices. That means, this laptop is working as a router for both. It takes a message or signal from one laptop and forwards it to the other laptop which is not in the range of the sending devices. So, that means, the requirement of this ad hoc network is what you are assuming is that certain devices in the network at times are working as a router. In normal case, if you take your wire network, our routers are already fixed. Your base stations in cellular network are working as a router because they take a call and then forward it to the different base station and that forwards it to next. Then finally, it moves to a base station to which the final receiving mobile station is connected with. So, therefore, what I am say, trying to say is if you take a case of cellular network or you take your wire network, the routers are fixed and whereas in ad hoc network, the devices themselves are trying to work as a router. So, now in that case, so your devices are having with both the capabilities, they can work independent nodes or they can work as a router. So, that is where the difference comes, how they differ from the wide network. Now, there is a very peculiar characteristic here now, if you look at this, that means when you are communicating like this, the network cannot be in a very large area. Why? because you communicate a laptop A com communicates with B, then B communicates with C, then C communicates with D and D communicates with E and so on and so forth. How long you can communicate like this? You cannot communicate to a longer distance. The reason is even one of the link fails, the entire uh, delivery of message fails. Now, before why I said this is, why it is called a down network that I have not yet explained to you. Now, look at the situation because we are making a network of mobile devices like laptops. Now, since laptops are being held by people and they will move here and there, like they are moving in a car and establish a network of laptops because they are using their laptops. Now, that means all the devices are movable devices, either persons are taking them and moving and the, some vehicles or some other devices are uh, using them and then uh, moving. So, therefore, the laptops which have been working as a router forwarded in middle may move out Therefore, the link between is broken. Now, that means what I am saying, probably those who are studying the communication course in network may be knowing very well what is topology. Topology means if I have a network of devices, how these devices are interconnected with 
among themselves that is what is called topology. So, at a given point of time the devices are at certain place and there is a connectivity among themselves that is one kind of topology. But if some divide move, device moves out of the link that I said if a laptop B is working as a router between A and C and after some time this B moves out that means it is neither in the wireless range of A nor it is in the wireless range of B that means A and B cannot communicate there is no other device in between. But probably some other device Y comes in and works as a router. Now the earlier connectivity is A, B, C. Now B has moved out. Now the connectivity is A, Y and C. Now that is what the topology change. Now this topology is changing because of the mobility of <coughs> the devices. Therefore, we call the topologies ad hoc. This time this is the connectivity layout and certain nodes moves out and then the layout of connectivity changes. So, the layout of the connectivity is temporary that is why we call it ad hoc uh, topology and therefore, the network is called ad hoc network. Now, since I have an ad hoc network that will be in a small area and it will be very useful like let us say for example, you are going for a uh, rescue operation like take a example an example of tsunami. When the tsunami comes and the rescue team went to save the people and some of the people have to go to the sea and some are outside. All telecommunication infrastructure, all poles of the wired lines and all base stations of cellular network, they are uh, uh, what you call gone and damaged due to the tsunami and now you can't communicate. Therefore, what is to be done is now the people will go with their devices and some will move to the sea, some are at the outside, how do they communicate? That means the devices with them will be interconnected, they will be connected by wireless and there will be interconnectivity of these devices and a small network is established and people will start communicating among themselves. That means what I am trying to say is now such kind of networks are only established in a small area that is one. And these wireless network may be further connected with the internet through a fixed device access point. Then we can say wireless internets. And the second category is wireless sensor network which I will focus on more. But and then we have a VANET. VANET stands for Vacular Ad Hoc Network. That means this is also one of the uh, upcoming area whether the cars moving on a road, these vehicles, they are enabled with wireless devices and wireless enabled capabilities and they can make a network while moving on the road and communicate with each other. The advantage of that is that means I have a network of these vehicles which are moving on the road. Now, while they are on move, the links may be broken and the links are formed. So, therefore, there is a temporary interconnection which is formed, then the, the car moves away and therefore, the link is broken, the topology keeps on changing, therefore, they fall under the category of ad hoc network. But the advantage of these networks is assume that a vehicle is moving ahead and there is a collision that it hits the car ahead of it and if immediately sends it and send this message to the car following it. That means the person driving that car behind can put his brakes on time and an accident can be saved. And similarly, if a car moving ahead and, and it sense that there is a traffic jam on a road, if it could send the signals back to the cars following it and they can timely divert their routes and the traffic jam can be released as fast as possible. So, uh, that is the one application of VANET and which also falls under ground network because the vehicles are moving. But our focus today is on sensor networks. And whether you take VANET, whether you take sensors, the underlying technology which they are using is wireless. And all difficulty challenges which wireless communication poses will be applicable to all these kind of networks and therefore, they need to address them. So, now uh, let us move to uh, the specific topic which is at a wireless sensor network. And if you look at what is wireless sensor network, we said it composed of a large number of sensor nodes. What does a sensor node I will explain and which are densely deployed either inside the phenomenon or every that means what we try to do is in the area we try to measure certain phenomena like say temperature or you may be measuring pressure in a room or example you take you may be monitoring the wildlife in say JNU or some other place where the lot of wild animals are moving and we want to because they are endangered species or they are rare species sometimes we want to monitor them where do they move and how in what condition they are. So, therefore, probably we may put some chips 
or some sensors on the body and these sensors may be communicating and this information may be collected at some central place. And now therefore, uh, uh, that means we are trying to measure certain characteristic or certain phenomena these animals are going through. Say for example, some animal we may be trying to say what is the animal's body temperature and so and so and the location even where the animal is currently now. That means, I, we will put certain sensors which will be sending location information of an animal to the central place and therefore, at any point of given time, we may be knowing where a particular animal is in the forest and that is where the sensor network comes in picture. So, we will have lot of animals if you assume and every animal has a sensor on its body and uh, which uh, gets collects its location information and sends it to the central place and therefore, we will have a large number of sensor sensor deployed and, and uh, measuring certain phenomena like the animal's movement. And how to distribute this sensor? One of the way is a random deployment. That means, if you are going to a very uh, area which is the humans cannot have an access to that area, therefore, you have to deploy by helicopter. The helicopter will go and drop the sensors there and to measure the, the phenomena in the forest, deep forest. And then you cannot say that I will place the sensors in this manner. That means, they will be randomly wherever they are dropped. But other is probably you want to measure certain activities in a room, say putting your cameras in a room to man monitor the activities going on, a, going on in a room. Therefore, you can plan at what location you would like to your put your cameras. Cameras are also a kind of sensor. Therefore, in such kind of situation, you can plan out how the sensors are to be placed because you would always like to put a minimum number of sensors that gives you maximum coverage. That means, the object which it is covering say for example, in a room if you are trying to monitor the activities in a room, you will like to see that all activities should be monitored. So, that means, you will need a minimum number of cameras to be placed. So, that and that minimum number has to be calculated and therefore, the positions are important because certain positions provide you a minimum number. If you do not use those positions probably, uh, you may land with using more number of cameras and that means, it is not being cost effective uh, for you. So, therefore, uh, the important is how they are placed. Now, the next question is and how a wireless sensor node? If you go by that, the a sensor network consists of a sensor node number one and then it has a base station or a sync node where what does it mean? Uh, the sync node that means, sensors try to cover the the, the information which they are meant for say for example, cameras may be meant uh, monitoring the activities or some sensor put on the bodies of the animals may be measuring the temperature of the, the animal all the time. So, they are collecting the temperature information. So, the information collected by these sensors is transmitted to a central place which I call a sync node or base station and all information is collected there. Now, the base station may be far away from a sensor node and therefore, how the sensor node cannot straight away transmit to the base station. Therefore, they have to use the help of other sensor nodes in the middle as a router. That is how this network is formed. Now, look at this uh, figure. Uh, look at this figure and where uh, these blue uh, small circles uh, denote your sensors placed at various places they may be monitoring certain environmental conditions say for example, monitoring your temperature or a pressure in, a, in an area and then they are collecting this information and then this information is transmitted uh, to this, uh, the, the sync node which is shown through an yellow uh, color. Now, if you look at uh, the green uh, dashed lines are denoting the sensors which are collecting information and then they are sending through another, another blue nodes through a blue arrow marked on both the way. They are working as a router in between and then they are being uh, transmitting the information to the yellow node which is a sync node and that sync node will be using this information. Now, <coughs> your sensor network, so this uh, was a diagram of a sensor network and this sensor network the sync node may be further communicating with the gateway or the internet or the rest of the world through the internet. Therefore, this must be connected with the gateway. So, now <coughs> what we said is you have a sensor network where your the kind of sensors are collecting information and transmitting this information to a central node which we call a sync node or a base station 
and final. But if need arises, you want to communicate this information to the rest of the world, then you need connectivity with the internet. Therefore, your sync node will be connected with the gateway which provides you connectivity to the internet. Now, if you look at the composition of a sensor node, how a sensor node consists of what are the various components of a sensor node. Now, a sensor node must have a component which does the task of sensing whatever activity or event or a phenomena it is supposed to sense. If it is supposed to measure temperature, so this sensor component will be measuring the temperature or if it is supposed to measure the pressure, it may be measuring the pressure. Now, second component is a processor that means in addition to sensing the information, it gathers the information and the node has to process that information at time. So, you should have a processing unit which will process the data sensed by the sensor. And then what you need is the sensor node must transmit this data further to a sink or to a another sensor node. So, therefore, what you need is you need a radio link that means this sensor node should have a component which provides you wireless transmitter and receiver that transmits and receives. And yes, when you collect data, the phenomena which is being uh, measured by the sensor, that data has to be stored. And therefore, the sensor node, therefore, the sensor node must have some storage and that means it must have some memory support. It may have some RAM limited. And then, of course, they need a power supply. Since we deploy these sensor nodes at various places, which may be accessible and which may be very difficult to ac for, uh, accessing by the human beings and therefore, what you need is they must be provided a power supply and that power supply cannot be AC power supply. They will be running on battery. So, there is a battery component and one of the difficulty is and these all devices all are on board. Your communication, your sensing are on the board. They are part of one device which you call a sensor node. Now, these batteries have a limited power supply and when they are used, the power will drain and gradually this power may be so drain that the battery is gone. Now, you need to recharge this battery. So, if you are in the accessible area, so where you can go and replace the battery, this is one area, one of the way. But if the sensors are deployed at a place where the human accessibility is not possible, then the only way out is this sensor has to be replaced by another sensor. So, now therefore, the cost involved in such places will be high, but at the same time for human safety, they may be very useful. Now, this is the, 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 uh, the diagram where it shows that uh, what are the various components of a sensor network now, uh, sensor node. Now, the sensor nodes if you look at, they vary, uh, uh, there are different kinds of sensor nodes and they may be used for various applications. Now, you may be measuring the acceleration, so they need an accelerometer that may be sensing the acceleration in a car or in a in, in, in this and then you have a barometric pressure you want to measure, the sensor must be measuring the pressure and you may have a light sensor in a room, how much light is there, so therefore you can control the light that if there is a more light and that has to be reduced, so there may be lighter uh, light sensor. There may be GPS sensors which, which are communicating with the GPS satellite and measuring the location information of a device whether, wherever it is put. So, as I said, the animal's movement has to be measured, therefore, each animal will have a sensor node uh, on uh, put on its body and that sensor node will definitely be containing a GPS receiver which may be communicating with a satellite, GPS satellite and gathering information, the location information, the longitudes and latitudes of that place. Therefore, you always know where the animal has moved. So, these are called GPS modules with the GPS receiver put on at various places. And there are temperature sensors, there are humidity sensors, acoustic sensor, magnetic RPM sensor that how fast a magnetic uh, wheel or something else moves. And you have a measuring for solar, radi uh, solar radiations and so and so forth. Wind speed, these are also a kind of sensor. And seismic, when you have earthquake, you try to measure the, the, the intensity of earthquake. So, you may be having already some sensors put there. The moment the earthquake comes, the sensors measure this uh, in a rect scale and then this information is transmitted to a uh, what you call sink node. And so, and so forth. You may be measuring a, a pH value of a soil and so and so forth. So, you can have a various kind of sensor nodes and therefore, the applications of sensor nodes, sensor networks are very large.
depending on your application. Now, and the cost of these sensor nodes may vary from 1 dollar to a million or what you call lakhs of rupees from uh, hundreds of rupees to lakhs of rupees. Say for example, you want to buy it temperature measuring may be costing few hundred rupees, 200, 300, but if you want to have some big sensors put on aeroplane probably they may be costing lakhs of rupees. So, cost of sensors varies from a small 100 to 1000 and lakhs of rupees. Now, look at this. As I said the base station or a sync node is different from the sensor nodes because this has to collect the data. So, one of the requirement is that it will does the task of receiving data and therefore, it should have a large storage capacity and it has to communicate with the outside that means, it must be linked with the gateway to communicate with the rest of the world. And that means, overall the processing capacity of this node should be large because it is processing all the data which it has received from various sensor nodes. Now, and probably mostly these base stations are fixed at a place. Now, that means what we said is sensor nodes are small in size, they have a limited processing capability, they have a limited battery power, they have a limited storage capability, whereas the base station or a sync node has a larger processing capability, capability and more storage and they are fixed, they are not mobile. So, therefore, there is a difference between them. Now, uh, this is again a repeated example which I will skip. Then there are certain characteristics of a sensor network. Now, the number of nodes in general in a sensor network are very large because one of the reason is the transmission range of a sensor node is very limited. So, to cover a large area probably you will need more sensor nodes one and the second region may be to monitor or to cover an area or to monitor an object, you need more number of sensors. One sensor may not work. Lay, an example I quoted earlier is, if you are monitoring the activities in a room, probably one camera will not work because either that may be covering the face of a person or it may be covering the back of a person or probably it may not cover the sight of a person. Therefore, you will need a multiple cameras to cover simple uh, a person like say for if I am uh, delivering a talk, this time only my face is appearing. If my back has to be also shown, then one camera will not be suffice. So, you will have to put another camera. So, that is what I am saying. If you are monitoring certain activities, to, to monitor the activities or to monitor an object, you need multiple sensors and then you may have multiple objects to be monitored and further you need these sensor nodes not only working only for the monitoring, they are also working to forward the data transmitted by other sensor. Therefore, the number of sensor nodes you need in a sensor network are of order of the magnitude very high. One of the characteristic is this. The other characteristic is they are deployed densely that means, the density of sensor nodes is high. Since the transmission range of a sensor node is limited, therefore, to communicate this message through a sensor data to a sen data of a sensor to a larger distance you need multiple nodes in between. So, therefore, the density is going to be high. Otherwise you will probably face uh, link failures again and again or uh, the, the message is not delivered because there is no sensor in between, therefore, data cannot be transmitted. And as I said they have a comp limited computational and uh, battery capabilities that is always there. So, therefore, you must use its battery power efficiently as efficiently as possible. That means, the utilization of battery should not be used for redundant communication. It should be used only as and when it is required to be used. That is how we can save more power and use our sensor nodes to a longer time and the lifetime of a sensor network can be increased or enhanced. As, and as I said sensor nodes are prone to failure, that means the failure may occur. That means, the battery fails, the, uh, the, the battery is failed, therefore, uh, the battery is drained, therefore, the link fails or one of the important point here is the physical security of these sensor nodes, because they are put at certain physical location where you may not have security. So, the physical security of sensor nodes is equally important, because they may be stolen, then you may need to replace and if a sensor node is stolen, you may pr probably uh, land with a failure of a link. The other is the topology as I said, because the sensor nodes keep on moving. If I say animal X is the sensor node and the sensor collects the data and that it sends to the other sensor put on the body of another animal. If that animal moves to other place, the then is broken. So, therefore, the topology of the sensor network is changing frequently. Therefore, what you need is you must have routing algorithms or routing protocols 
which takes care of changing topology so that they can deliver the message to the right destination and timely without wasting time. Now, the sense and nodes or ad hoc nodes and even wireless network or wireless communication if you look at are broadly or mainly broadcast in nature. That means, when you communicate it is heard by all which are within the range. Say for example, while, while I am talking here it is a broadcast in a sense those who are in this room at, uh, or as long as my voice can reach the distance anybody in this area where my voice can reach can hear this. So, that means, I am broadcasting everybody can hear it that is what uh, the, the wireless medium does in case of wireless sensor network or another. So, therefore, the question is the broadcast may result into collisions. Now, if two persons if I am delivering a talk here now if somebody else in the room starts talking there will be interference. So, I cannot communicate because what I am talking cannot be delivered. So, there will be an interference by somebody else. So, that means, if there are nodes within the transmission range of each other if one is communicating and other node also starts communicating then the communication will be interfered and there will be difficulty. And finally, that the sensor, sensor networks may not have a global ID. Therefore, what you need is if they have a local ID then they you must have a technique where you can identify them uniquely. Now, there are applications of sensor network. Uh, if you look at there are industrial applications and environmental monitoring, there is a health monitoring, uh, traffic monitoring on the on the road and security and military sensing, animal monitoring and I will give an example of animal monitoring here now. Uh, this if you look at there are animals and there are sensors put on their body and they, they send the information through one sensor to another sense and that is sent to a central place which you call a sink and finally, through a gateway to the internet. And this is what uh, 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 places where the wildlife is important like in Sundarban area the forest and uh, now ministry of information technology has probably given a project to um, uh, some institution to monitor the forest locations or wild animals in the Sundarban and even NDRI Kandal had a project to have a has a project to monitor their animals in their cattle yard and they are doing this in collaboration with IT Daily. And if you look at this health care monitoring, the health of the animals here can be monitored that sometimes some animal is in heat. So, it needs to be fertilization and therefore, this monitoring will does the work and if some animal is not keeping well and therefore, the temperature of the body can be measured and the doctors may immediately attain the animal and so and so forth. This is an example of a cattle and there are certain requirement of wireless sensor network. When you want to have a wireless sensor network, you must fulfill that. Now, one of the requirement is they run on low power, you cannot have a wireless sensor node which runs on high power and that is not possible because they are battery operated and if you try to increase the power of the battery, the weight of the battery will increase therefore, we cannot have high power battery, the weight of the battery will increase and therefore, sensor network will be heavier. And the self configuring that means, when the sensor nodes are put there, they may be making the network by themselves, there is no central location or anybody controlling them to connect with each other. They must volunteer to communicate and to work as a router and they are small the one of the requirement is the sensors must be in small size generally because you cannot deploy the heavy size sensors and most technical problem is the collision and avoidance because they are broadcast in nature if more than one communicates then there will be interference. Now, how to schedule them or how to make them communicate without interference. So, that means, at a point given point of time only one node may be communicating and rest in the transmission range must keep quiet that is how we have to monitor. And it is a multi hop communication that means, one sensor is not directly transmitting to other sensor there are intermediate sensors which are doing the task of forwarding it. So, that is why it becomes a multiple multi communication and therefore, the routing is problem at times. The most important is data fusion where the data collected by the multiple sensors about an object may be overlapping. That means, if two three cameras are covering and one is from the front, another is from the back and two are from the sides and some of the area which they are covering may be common. And therefore, if we send all data then we are landing with transmitting of more data. So, what you have to do we have to fuse this data that means, what is common? that should be only once, what is uncommon that has to be taken, 
only that data has to be sent and duplicate data should not be sent. That is what data fusion means. So, you need algorithms and you need protocols which does the task of data fusion and finally, we need optimized coverage and conversion, co co convergence. That means, the coverage means when you are covering the object like camera is covering, then how many cameras you need to? That is the optimal number must be used so that the coverage is given all the time and when you are doing this, the convergence must be fast. That means, when you are covering, it should not be that all data should come together and their uh, fusion should be faster. So, there are some important factors. So, uh, that should be taken care in design of wireless sensor network. One of the important factor is the fault tolerance. Even if a link fails, my network must keep on uh, communicating. That means, I should have some redundant extra sensors already deployed, so that my communication does not break. And scalability, that means, if I am communicating and uh, if I increase the network size, the performance of the network should not degrade, that is what scalability means. I have a lot of hardware constraints, there is a battery power, there is a limited uh, hardware processing capabilities, so that must be taken into consideration and the network topology is changing and the environment in which we put that sensor is equally important. And then finally, the transmission media remains is only wireless and then the wireless protocols are designed in such a way that the wireless communication works for sensor network and power consumption as I said the power must be used, utilized with an efficient manner. So, I think time is short, so I will try to skip few slides may be covered in. Uh, afterward and, and these are some uh, research issues which probably may not be uh, useful for undergraduate, but if somebody is interested can see it. Uh, so, people are working on. Okay, okay. Okay. So, uh, let me uh, put it this way and the technology which you are using is uh, the WiMAX. Wi-Fi that is A02.11 and there are various versions and Bluetooth is also used for uh, sensor networks, Zigbee is another protocol and there is IEEE standard smart transistor interface interface uh, standards. Now, what I am trying to focus is if some students at undergraduate may be interested at times to do their project in sensor network or some graduate students may also be willing to do their projects. So, there are certain or some may be uh, willing to go for further higher studies. There are some research issues uh, which are very important where people are working is one of the important issues is the coverage and connectivity. That means, how to find an optimal number of sensors that provides the required coverage. That means, the, the object is covered, it never goes without coverage without using a redundant sensors one. And second is the connectivity among the sensors is provided all the time and one is you have a large number of sensors, therefore, one sensor goes, other remains, that is the best, the one way, but that if the number of sensors are very high, they are also going to create collisions and contentions. So, therefore, the optimality is very important and this relates to an optimization problem if the students are ready to work. And generally, we use certain simulators and generally simulation is done. If the student wants to work, they can simulate their work and go ahead. And one of the important is the energy conservation. How to use energy efficiently because the battery drainage. So, this may happen with through multiple layers. Now, one is while the transmitter is transmitting a message, now it may happen that the, trans the power used for transmission is transmitted to a longer distance if you use the maximum power, but the, the receiver is at a shorter distance. Therefore, I must use a limited power that can be sufficient to transmit it to the receiver depending on the distance. So, I should not waste power. Why should I use 10 milliwatt if I need only 5 milliwatt to transmit the message to the destination? So, I must use 5 watt. So, I will say 5 watt. That is what I am trying to say. That is, that means you use power in a controlled manner. This is one. And then how to uh, you control the power and how to decide that how the far distance of the destination is from the source. That is another area. You can conserve energy. Second is when you send route the, 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 the network layer when sending packets to a lower layer, then it may happen that it may be sending to multiple, a node may be transmitting the packet to the multiple uh, sensors. If they all transmit communicating, then they are all using their power. Whereas, 
only one node may have forwarded it and the message could have delivered to the final destination. That could have been sufficient. Uh, sorry to interrupt you. We okay, have a call you. from Haryana. Okay, uh, good you. afternoon. Please ask a question. Sir, I live in Rajasthan. I have a Pakistan border. I have a lot of distance from here. Sir, I want to know that there is a wireless network in a lot of range. So, what are you going to do with this? Which network are you talking about? Are you talking about a cellular phone or are you talking about a phone? Both of them. See, I think uh, hmm. You are uh, referring to uh, your mobile communication or you are referring to your access point what you use in the lab. Now, there are in two both, case, both cases. Now, if you are talking to your uh, telephones and cellular network, uh, the could be uh, the service provider which has established its base stations, they may be little far away and they may be very less in numbers and the power because they have they were using limited power like a tower can transmit up to 5 kilometers say. And if you are outside 5 kilometer, uh, one region could be you will not receive it. And second is the important, I will give a very good example. Uh, I come from an area. I had a, a wireless telephone uh, that is called WLL wireless local loop. From exchange to my home, it used to come through uh, wireless. Now, I bought this in a summer and the communication which was done was very fantastic. I used to call from Delhi to my parents and the communication was fine. But all of a sudden, in July, August, I found that the communication is not happening. The reason was, then I tried to find out, the vegetation grows in your July and August because of the rainy season. When the vegetation grows, the signal also has fading. Fading means when the signal goes with high buildings and how high, uh, high uh, vegetation area, then the strength of the signal decreases. Therefore, if it was reaching to 5 uh, kilometer with good signal strength, good power, it will not reach to that distance because of the obstacles, buildings or the vegetation. Now, now I will get weak signals. Now, the question is whether the proper number of base stations are established or not. It also depends on the service provider. If one is not finding it economical, why economically viable, he will not provide much uh, base station one. If you are referring to your wireless local area network, then the number of access point put around is not adequate at right distance or it has not been rightly planned. This could be one of the reasons. If you have further queries, if you can give me exactly what you want, then I can answer that. In the knowledge of geography of the area. Yes, area it, it, important, pieces. very important. Okay. For uh, establishing sensor network okay, the, or wireless network. height of the wireless tower. Uh, uh, tower is important when you are using microwaves. Okay. Uh, when you are using this broadcast, Okay. Uh, the tower height is, is, is not that high because mm -hmm. even our mobile phones has a okay. antenna which is small in size because it depends okay. on the frequency of the wave or the wavelength of wave okay. is also useful. We have another height. caller from Chhattisgarh. Okay. Take the question. Good afternoon. Please ask your question. Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon. Sir, my question is that I am from Chhattisgarh. Okay. And I am residing in that area which was very Naxal infected area. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Sir, my question is that, mm -hmm. ke, sir, ye jo logo ke paas wireless network ko capture karne ki technique kahan se aagai? Or jo ab, hum civilians ke paas nahi hoti, wo facility aur wo ke paas ho jati hai. Mm -hmm. So, sir, aisa kyo hai? Hmm. Kahan, kahan se aagai? Us par to hum log charcha nahi karenge, lekin wireless network or satellite Karin network hai. communication okay. par charcha kar lehen. Uh, kahan se aagai? Ye to hum, hmm. aapko hindi mein batate hai. Huh. तो वो तो हम चर्चा नहीं कर सकते ये दूसरा मामला है लेकिन जब भी आप वायरलेस यूज करते हैं तो कोई ना कोई आप फ्रीक्वेंसी यूज कर रहे होंगे और आपका रिसीवर भी उसी फ्रीक्वेंसी भी ट्यून होता है और जो लोग ये सब काम करते हैं एक तो वो अपने रिसीवर बना सकते हैं उसी फ्रीक्वेंसी पे ट्यून करके एक बात दूसरी बात तो उसमें सिक्योरिटी के फीचर्स होते हैं कई बार क्या होता है कि आप एक फ्रीक्वेंसी पर नहीं कम्युनिकेट करते आप फ्रीक्वेंसी हॉपिंग करते हैं एक बार इस फ्रीक्वेंसी में भेजा नेक्स्ट टाइम दूसरी फ्रीक्वेंसी में भेजा आप उसको हॉपिंग करके बदलते रहते हैं सो देर फोर जो उसको इंटरफ उस पर इंटरप्ट करना चाहता है उसको जानना चाहता है उसके लिए डिफिकल्ट हो जाता है अगर लोग रात दिन इसी पर लगे रहे आप ऐसे मान लीजिए दो जो इस धंधे में है वो लोग उसको इंटरप्ट करके अपना रिसीवर भी उसी तरह से डिजाइन कर सकते हैं एक तो बात इसको हम फ्रीक्वेंसी हॉपिंग कहते हैं दूसरा क्वेश्चन आता है कि भाई हम जब फ्रीक्वेंसी को न लेके और दूसरे कोडिंग लगा रहे हैं जिसको हम सी डी एम आजकल टेक्नोलॉजी कहते हैं उसमें हम अगर डिफरेंट कोडिंग वर्क कर रहे हैं अगर उसको भी ब्रेक कर ले बैठे रहे और लगे रहे उसको भी ब्रेक कर ले तो वो रिसीव करने लग जाते हैं सिग्नल एक तो है तीसरा ये है कि भाई 
उनके भी अपने सिग्नल को इंटरसेप्ट करने के जो तरीके हैं वो यही है कि या तो आप कोडिंग के लिए अपने इंस्ट्रूमेंट डिवाइस कर लें कि उनको रात दिन मॉनिटर करें और डिकोड कर लें तीसरा आप किस फ्रीक्वेंसी पर हॉप कर रहा है उसके लिए भी इंस्ट्रूमेंट लगाए रखें और उसको मॉनिटर करते रहें और आपको पता लग जाए तो अपने डिवाइस बना सकते हैं यही उसकी वजह है let me continue with this and what we are talking about is energy consumption what i was talking that in uh, you can control the power how far you have to transmit your signal like if you have to uh, you need 10 milliwatt to transmit it to 5 meter that is a hypothetical example and you need only 5 uh, milliwatt to send to 250 uh, uh, meters if your receiver is at 250 meter why to use 5 milliwatt to send it to 5, five meter or 500 meter. So I must use 2.5 milliwatt to send it to 250 meters. Now if you can control that power, how much power I need to transmit, therefore you can save power and you can use in future one. And second is, when you are sending packets from the upper layer that is network layer, then what is happening is in a broadcast medium, I am broadcasting so it is heard by many of the people sitting around. and then they can further transmit it. Then everybody is using their energy. Rather than everybody retransmitting it, further transmitting it, only one should forward it and my message should be delivered. If I know that only one is forwarding it and still it can be delivered to the target, then only one node should forward, rest should not forward. And they will save their energy and they can use power for a longer period of time. So therefore, we have to devise or design algorithms and protocols where we can use energy in a, or, or battery power in a controlled manner. The third problem is of energy holes. If you look at this, I will give it so an example, if there is an example. What is energy hole means? If you look at when a node is collecting information, now it sends it to a node inside here and then finally it comes to the uh, sync node. Now if the energy of the intermediate node which are lighter in blue color and the outer side node are dark in blue and the inner nodes are lighter in blue and if the energy of a lighter blue colored node in the middle, if it diminishes, then the communication between this blue node which is at the outer side and the sync node cannot take place. So that means the energy of this lighter blue node in the middle gradually gets depleted and then it creates a hole. That means it is, there is no node which has energy to transmit this. Now in wireless network, if it sends a network, if you look at the nodes sending from the outer edge, that outer edge, the small blue nodes, when they are sending, then there may be a common light blue node in the middle, which may be receiving from multiple nodes from outside and then transmitting into the sink. Now one lighter blue node, which is the intermediate node, is receiving from multiple nodes, so it has to forward everybody's message, so it is consuming more energy. So it will uh, drain its energy faster. So now one of the issues only one node should not be using forwarding, the other node should also be involved, that is called load balancing. That means the load which is coming to the intermediate node, it should be distributed among all the nodes so that everybody uses its energy almost equally, it can never be equal exactly. One. And second is, and therefore we can save the energy. So this is called energy hole problem and which we can take care of and that is another issue of uh, research. Now data fusion as I said. If you look at this uh, data fusion, uh, there are certain data mining techniques which people have been using. There are approaches of optimization. If you collect data and then you try to optimize this and aggregate what is common and then try to send. And there is a clustering based approaches where rather than all nodes are sending to every node, you make cluster of group of nodes. There is a one group, there is another group. So within group, any node can transmit from group to one group to another group, only head node it transmit. So we can change, keep on changing the head nodes so that only one node does not uh, deplete its energy. And then finally, and that is what there are regions uh, of energy holes in wireless sense and that one I said non-replacement of energy source if it is, if the wireless sensor network is deployed in a very uh, difficult area where you cannot, then probably you cannot replace it. Question? No, we will now wind up. Okay. Now, finally, I will conclude it with 
that this is an emerging technology and you will find in future a lot of uh, sensor networks are deployed and this is highly useful in monitoring various activities in a challenging yeah. application yeah. or for humans and a lot of research is still needed to be done at technological fronts and still application softwares are required and to make it more useful the cost effective sensors are to be designed and with that I thank okay. So, well friends, with this we conclude the lecture today. Tomorrow we will have another lecture on the wireless network and I thank all of you for watching the lecture and on your behalf I thank Dr. D. K. Lovial for giving such an insightful lecture. Thank you very much.